While the USB rubber ducky was made famous as an offensive device, it's also useful for using things like a headless Raspberry Pi running Kali Linux. Today, we'll show you how to use DuckyScript to automate B-Side NG on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. While the USB rubber ducky has been made famous for attacking other devices, it's actually pretty useful for augmenting your own tools to be more useful. Now in the scenario where you're doing a pen test in say a waiting room, it's useful to be able to use b site and G on a device like a Raspberry Pi. However, it's not the most subtle thing to just take out a Pi and start programming it. Instead, it's more useful to use something like a USB rubber ducky to automate the process and make it more subtle. Now, ideally, we would want to be able to take the USB rubber ducky, plug it into the Raspberry Pi, and then simply check on our smartphone later to see how the attack is proceeding. We can do this by using B-Side NG, loading it into a ducky script, and then plugging it into the Raspberry Pi when we're wherever we want to be. Now, this sort of attack isn't useful if you're mobile because B-Side NG works by identifying networks that have clients connected, adding them to a list, and then attacking them one by one. So if you're in a car or walking, you'll generally be out of range by the time that it becomes uh, actually attacked. So in order to get started with this, you'll need a USB rubber ducky, a micro SD card, a Raspberry Pi running Kali Linux, and also Java installed on your system because the GUI that we'll be using to load up the ducky script on the SD card requires Java to work. Once you have all these things, go ahead and take your SD card, plug it into your adapter or directly if you can, and we can begin. Now, the first thing to point out is that because we're scripting something, just because we're not directly attacking someone's computer doesn't mean we can automate something that's out and out illegal. The script we'll be using today attacks any nearby wireless network, so you need to be sure that you have permission to run it against any networks that you intend to basically audit. Now, you can do this by adding a couple filters, such as the channel number and the BSSID of the network you have permission to filter. Uh, to audit, and I recommend you do so, otherwise you may get into trouble because this is actually disconnecting people briefly from their network in order to harvest handshakes. Now to get started, we'll need to go to the USB rubber ducky GitHub repository under the Hack5 Darren repo. You can see the URL is here and we'll link it in the description. Go ahead and click on Cloner Download and you can copy this and then in a terminal window, go ahead and type git clone and then the link. Here you can see it's already been downloaded. So for us, we'll type CD for change directory and then USB rubber ducky LS to see the contents of this folder. And we'll want to go ahead and download the duck loads folder. Now this is a special repo that uh, our writer Sabnin put together that has a number of custom uh, ducky scripts that have been developed, one of which is the one we'll be covering today. So you'll go ahead and type git clone and then github.com slash sadmin2001 slash duckloads.git. And you can see that it already exists here, but for you, it will download it and put it into your USB rubber ducky folder. Now go ahead and type ls and your uh, folder should match the contents of this folder. So we can go ahead and go on to the next step. Now we're gonna go ahead and load up our Java GUI and we'll just need to go into the folder we downloaded, USB rubber ducky, and then open duck encoder GUI.jar. Now, as soon as we open this, you'll see that there's a couple of different configuration options that we'll need to pay attention to. The first being making sure that we select the right keyboard. Now, if you don't do this, your output will be in a different language and the USB rubber ducky will basically pretend to be the wrong kind of keyboard. And instead of what you want, you'll just get a bunch of gibberish. Now for the input file, we'll go ahead and go to our duck loads folder and we will select the uh, respio.txt file and click on browse for input. And I'll go ahead and just drag and drop this in. Now, once this is open, we can see what the script is actually gonna do. And in the remarks section, we can see this is a tool to start grabbing Wi-Fi handshakes from an attack antenna on the Kali Pi. Now there are two important assumptions when you're going to run this script. 
The first is that you have an attack antenna installed, which means a Kali compatible wireless network adapter, aside from the one that's uh, pre-installed on the Raspberry Pi. So the internal adapter can't do this, and you'll need it for the last step of being able to connect to uh, this attack in progress and monitor it or change it or otherwise kind of see what's going on. So it's important that you have a communications antenna, aka the pre-installed one on the Raspberry Pi, and a attack antenna, which is any Kali compatible uh, wireless network adapter. So you'll also need to use Screen. And Screen is a program that allows you to be a little bit more versatile with SSH. Basically, you can start a SSH session on the Raspberry Pi on your cell phone, logged into SSH, uh, type screen, exit from that screen session, and then on your laptop, be able to SSH into the Raspberry Pi and pick up that SSH session again and basically pick up where you left off with all the information that you had on the screen before. Now, this isn't quite as useful as like VNC, where you can see everything that's going on on the screen and use uh, GUI applications, but it is very useful for being able to start a process uh, and then jump back into it later. And that's what we'll take advantage of today. Now, you can see this script starts with uh, a delay of five seconds to allow whatever computer to register that it's plugged in. And then Alt F2 on a regular Kali laptop will actually just open up the commands window so this won't work. But on the Raspberry Pi, this key combination opens up the application finder, which means when we type our string here after a delay of three seconds, uh, this will open up a terminal window, allowing us to get to business and immediately type screen after a delay of about five seconds to allow slower devices like the Pi Zero W to catch up. After pressing enter and allowing another couple seconds, we can go ahead and start the attack antenna, which Kali Linux should name WLAN1. Now it's important that uh, we can rely on this, so if you're running some other operating system, this might not work. But for Kali Linux, when you plug in another antenna or a wireless network adapter, the internal one will be called, called WLAN0 and the additional one will be called WLAN1. Now after we run Airmon NG to put it into wireless monitor mode, We'll wait about 15 seconds because this can be slower on a smaller device, and then do our main attack command, which is B side NG WLAN 1 MON, which should be the new name of the wireless network adapter after we put it into monitor mode. After another couple delays in pressing return, we'll press Control A and then D in order to disconnect from the screen session. After that, we can find our Raspberry Pi on the network and just SSH into it to join the screen session we've started and see the attack progress. This is useful because you can have a Raspberry Pi with you and simply plug in the USB rubber ducky to start a wireless attack somewhere where you need to be discreet. Later on, you can check on the progress on your smartphone, which is a lot more discreet than trying to type all these commands in uh, on your phone or some other device. So the next step will be to pick a valid export path. And this is a little bit annoying, so we'll go ahead and select the no name USB, uh, sorry, SD, micro SD card that we have plugged in. And once we have that plugged in as our export location, we'll go ahead and name this inject.bin. We can go ahead and click on export bin. And as you can see, we've now exported this to the SD card. Now it's important to make sure that the .bin file is located in the SD card, and it has to be named inject.bin in order for the USB rubber ducky to find it when you start it up. If it's not located there because it exports somewhere else automatically, you can just drag and drop it. And if it's named something different, you'll need to make sure that it's named this before moving on. Now you can go ahead and eject the SD card and we'll plug it into the USB rubber ducky to give it a try and see if it works. Now, once we unplug it, we'll insert it into the USB rubber ducky here. And when it's ready, we'll plug it in and see if it works. Now, this, you, uh, this Raspberry Pi has a Panda Wireless PAU7S uh, wireless network adapter, which is compatible with Kali Linux. So we should be able to assume that the USB rubber ducky is starting the attack sequence. And if we check it on our computer, we'll be able to determine that it's done its job by just logging in via SSH and joining the screen session that it's created for us. So let's give it a try. 
We'll need to open up a fresh terminal window. So let's go ahead and do so, and we'll run the command thing in order to get the network range here. Now, once we have the network range, we can just look for anything with a SSH server running because there shouldn't really be much with that. So we'll throw together the nmap command sudo nmap the network range tag p22, which is the port for SSH. Now, after a short scan, we should be able to see the result, which should be the IP address that we're looking for. And that will allow us to go ahead and connect to the Pi and test to see if this is working. Now that the scan's done, you can see that we have one port that is open on this IP address here. So we'll go ahead and copy the IP address and we'll type SSH root at and in this part, you'll need to make sure that you actually have the user account name. So in our case, we're logged in as root, but in your case, you might be logged in as your own username and then press enter. Now you'll need the password, which by default is tour, T-O-O-R. And of course you should change this. And now you can see we are actually logged into our Kali box. So I'll go ahead and enlarge this a little bit. And now in order to connect to our session, which we've disconnected from, we'll need to type screen tack X. Now that we've done that, you can see this has succeeded. We've actually been cracking networks this entire time. And when we plugged in our uh, USB rubber ducky, it actually ran this process for us and saved it in a screen session that's easy to jump into either via your smartphone or via a terminal window on a laptop. So if we had a Raspberry Pi in our bag or something like that, and we just popped in a USB rubber ducky that was programmed to start this process, we would have the advantage of maybe walking around, getting a bunch of network handshakes, and then going back and checking it out later. Now, one thing to note is this doesn't work very well mobile. Um, B side NG needs time to gather a list of likely networks to attack and prioritize it. So if you're on the go, e either via driving or walking, unless it's around the same space, you're generally going to be out of range of the networks. It's prioritizing an attack on by the time it gets around to it. So while this is a great thing for if you're in a waiting room or stationary and doing a pen test, it's not necessarily the best thing for if you were going to do it uh, while you were out and about. That being said, as you can see, this attack we're using, which I can stop with a control C, is uh, capable of grabbing a whole bunch of uh, wireless network handshakes. And it's a really interesting thing you can do on the USB rubber ducky to automate the process of using a headless device like a Raspberry Pi Zero W, which is quite small and pretty inconspicuous. When writing programs for the USB rubber ducky, it's important to remember that it's basically blind and it's not able to react to different things that are changing on the screen. That means that B-Side NG is perfect because it only has a couple switches to flip and it's pretty much good to go no matter what's around it. Now with something more specific that requires you to maybe scan and select something, that might change, so it might not be as scriptable with the rubber ducky. That being said, it's still a great way to be able to either scale one thing across a whole bunch of computers simply by plugging it in, either to configure something or otherwise run one process a whole bunch of times, or to do something like this where you're scripting an attack you want to run in a more subtle way. Now, if you have your own rubber ducky script you want to share with us, make sure to leave it in the comments and we'd love to see it. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you have any comments or questions about the show, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.